Hey. Hello. Okay, before we get started with anything. Leslie. Okay, we're going to have a guest on the podcast today. What? Who? Sarah Holt. Holt, as in... Ada's great-granddaughter. I'm really sorry for not telling you you were just busy. And I... It's fine. Great, actually. How'd you find her? You really didn't see it? She left us a voice message on the last episode. Really? I never saw it, no. She's going to join in a few minutes, but I can pull up the voice message so you can hear it. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Hi, Presley and Adine. My name is Sarah. Sarah Holt. And uh, and I'm Ada Holt's great-granddaughter. Look, I know you think that my great-grandmother killed Pearl, but she didn't, and I can prove it to you. I also know that based on your previous episode, it looks bad for her. But I can explain all of that, if you'll let me... I hope to hear from you so we can talk. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, this is a good thing, I hope. Yeah. Oh, looks like she's in the waiting room. You ready? Yep. Let's get some answers. Hey, Sarah, can you hear us? I can. Cool. Welcome. I'm Presley. Hi, Madeline. Thanks for coming on here today. Yep. Thank you for having me. I just wanted to clear things up. Things that look bad, but really they're not. We appreciate that, though, in all honesty. I feel like this is about to make things more complicated. Just when we thought we knew who did it. <laughs> I get that. I just hope I can help and provide some answers. Let's jump into it, then. Yep, we're just going to record a quick intro, and then we'll introduce you and get started. Perfect. Hey, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Case Closed. Add on here. And Presley, for you keep listening, pause this episode and go get some snacks, because we're in for a wild ride today. In today's episode, we're welcoming a very special guest, Sarah Holt. Sarah is the great-granddaughter of Ada Holt, who, as you all know, is one of the main suspects in this case. Hi! Sarah is going to be answering some of our questions from last week and helping us understand the missing pieces. Sarah, if you want to... Yeah, of course. Well, hi, everyone. I'm Sarah. Ada's great-granddaughter. If you're a fan of this show, like I am, you're probably all caught up, including last week's episode about Darren Fox. Presley and Adine found out a bunch of stuff about Ada that makes her look awfully suspicious. But I'm here to explain away all of those things based on the stories my great-grandma told me. You're a natural of this. Well, let's jump into it. So firstly, before we start asking anything, is there anything you want to start off with? Yeah, uh, I have one thing that might clear up a bunch of questions from last week. Okay. Okay. um, My great-grandmother was a domestic violence advocate for women during World War II. Wow. What exactly did she do? She would help them escape difficult relationships, dangerous situations, unsafe circumstances, stuff like that. She was the Harriet Tubman of World War II. That's incredible. Yeah. But how come there was nothing we came across that said anything about it? I mean, it was a secret, so she helped them escape from situations. I don't even know what to say. That's honestly just really amazing. Yeah. Oh, and all of those meetings between her and whoever were secret, in locations that no one would suspect. Wait, is that why she was in Pearl's neighborhood that evening? Yep. She was meeting in another part of the neighborhood with one of the women. She knew it looked bad, that's why she practically fled when she ran into Gina. No wonder Gina was confused, but that makes sense. Yep. Sorry, I think we're both just confused and stunned. Sarah, why was Ada always so nervous during the interrogations? Listening to them, you'd think she was hiding something. She was nervous. Thinking about it, if you got involved with a case you actually had nothing at all to do with, wouldn't you be anxious? Yeah, I would be. And technically, she was hiding something. Her job. Right, so everything that made Ada seem even the slightest bit suspicious was really just nerves. Or something about her job. Exactly. So, now that we know that, I guess we can start asking some questions. Okay. Shoot. Did she talk about anything else regarding the case with you? Um, yeah, a little. 
I think it bothered her a little, but she always told me that she was happy to tell me the crazy stories about everything. I know you said you've been listening to the show. Thank you, by the way. So is there anything else you can tell us about any of the stuff we've covered so far? Huh. Uh, let me see. Well, uh... Sorry, sorry. I just, I, I just thought of something, though. So you heard our last episode when we discovered some stuff about Ada's time cards. Do you know anything about that? Oh, yeah, actually, I know about that. What can you tell us about all that confusion? Yeah, as you know, her time card said she was at the restaurant until 5.30, but Pearl's neighbor Gina saw Ada leaving the neighborhood around 4.45. Yeah, but here's the thing. Ada wasn't in that neighborhood at 4.45. She was there. Yeah, and, and she did run into Gina, but that was at 6.00. What? Why would Gina have lied about the time? Maybe she just remembered wrong? It wasn't that. Gina lied because she's the one that punched Ada's time card. Hold on, what? I thought they barely knew each other. Okay, uh... Okay, my line. Uh, Imogen, you did your line, right? I thought they barely knew each other. Yeah, uh, okay. Exactly. At least that's what Gina said when she described them running into one another. Yeah, except that wasn't exactly true either. Hello, Ada, yes? Gina, Gina, Gina. you don't have to act like you don't know me. No one is around. When this started, you promised that no one would know. I aim to keep it that way. I understand, but Gina, there truly is no one around. Everyone I assumed was eating supper or playing cards. I'm simply not a risk taker, Ada. Well, it was very nice to run into you. For you as well. Gina was one of the women my great grandma helped. What? That's why she wanted to help Ada. Yep. Wait a second. If Gina punched Ada's time card, that means she was at the savory spoon at closing. Right. Why the heck was she there? I don't know. But I do know that Gina also lied because she thought that Ada was guilty. I don't even know why she thought that Ada... Ada didn't talk a lot. Uh, I think it bothered her. So Gina pretty much turned on her. Yep. All I know is that Gina apparently thought she saw something suspicious in Ada that no one else did. So she lied to basically plant evidence that would make Ada look more suspicious. Pretty much, yeah. And Sarah, you have no clue why Gina would have been at the restaurant? Honestly, no clue. Sorry. No, it's fine. You know what else is weird? What? Darren never once mentioned Gina being at the restaurant at closing when he and Ada and Detective Bailey were talking about that in the interrogations. To be fair, Detective Bailey never asked who exactly was there at closing time. He only asked if Ada was or wasn't. It's evasive, of course, but... That is true. Hey, Sarah, what do you think about this? In all honesty... Um, I mean, this whole time I've been thinking... What? Is it possible Gina was involved? You think Gina hurt Pearl? I'm not saying that. But between Gina being at the Savory Spoon with Darren at closing time that day, and her all of a sudden turning on Ada, I just feel like she might have known something. I have to agree. It's all weird. Yeah. Plus, based on what my great-grandma told me before she died, Gina really thought that Ada could have killed Pearl. Exactly. Especially even... Oh. Exactly. Especially even after all the help Ada gave to Gina that you told us about. It's really strange. What else can you tell us about your great-grandmother? I mean, she was just so lively and happy and kind. I went over to her house every weekend and we had tea and lunch. And sometimes I stayed over and we watched movies. That, I don't know. Sorry, she... um. She died last year, and it's been pretty hard on my family. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's sad. Thanks, but uh, it's okay. 
I mean, she was really old and she had a good life. How old was she? A hundred and five. Wow, it's a pretty long life. Yeah, but anyway, I actually did just remember something. What is it? It's just one thing I've always been confused by is like, I know we sort of talked about this, but why would Gina ever think my great grandma could have killed Pearl? Like, did she even know her at all? It stinks. From what we've heard from the interrogations and what you're telling us today, Ada just seemed like she was such a great person. She really does. Thank you. She was. I just don't get why or how Gina could accuse Ada of doing something so evil, malicious, hostile. Exactly. Unless. Unless what? Unless Gina only accused Ada because she knew it wasn't really her. What? Presley, are you saying that you think Gina knew something more about Pearl's death? That, that she knew the truth? That she knew who killed Pearl? Would it shock you, either of you? I mean, not too much. She seemed like a bit of a gossip. There's no way she just knew all this stuff out of pure coincidence. I can't believe that. I mean, we don't know it's true, but... We also don't know that it's not. Yeah. You were really accused of murder? Uh, believe it or not, my dear Sarah, I was. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Did you do it? <laughs> no. Though sometimes I wanted to kill someone. Grandma! <laughs> Who? <laughs> Her name was, oh, oh my gosh. Her name was Gina, I believe. Yes, that's right. Gina Hale. What did she do? She was an ungrateful wretch. <laughs> Sarah, did you ever talk with your great grandma about the case itself? Did she have any personal suspicions as to who could have actually killed Pearl? Yeah, we talked about that a lot. I know she suspected Darren at one point. Then again, I also think she was mad that he didn't give her a raise, so. <laughs> Aside from that, was there a legitimate reason for suspecting Darren? Or she really was just throwing shade at her boss? <laughs> um, I think that she knew about some sort of feud between Darren and Frank. What about? I actually have no clue. She originally got confused and thought about Darren and Pearl, had disagreement of some sort. But it was actually her stepbrother, so... Gotcha. If you do figure out what the argument was over, email us. Of course. So, I forgot to ask this when you joined, mm. but what made you contact us and share the info you have? I just, I didn't want people thinking my great-grandma was some sort of serial killer monster when really she was the sweetest person I've ever known. That makes sense. Oh, we kind of got off topic earlier, but... Why did Ada decide to become a domestic violence advocate? She was in Great Britain during World War II. Her husband, or whoever at the time, was really violent. But she never reported anything because she was so scared and she didn't think there was anything anybody would or could do. But she finally escaped? The guy died in battle. Yikes. That's... I mean, I know this sounds a little twisted or whatever, but she kind of felt free after that. She left at the first opportunity and came back to the U.S. That doesn't sound twisted. Wait, hold on. How did she get to be in Great Britain if she was in Maine during Pearl's death and everything? Oh, yeah. Since Detective Bailey died in 41 and no one else would even try to solve the case, all the suspects had a free pass to leave and go wherever which Ada tried to do once, but failed. Anyway, she just wanted to forget about the case and start a new life somewhere new, I guess. Uh, hold on, back up a second. Detective Bailey died in 1941? Yep, he did. You guys didn't? No, we didn't know that. How did he die? It was ruled an accident. So, as I was saying, she was basically just afraid of being wrongly convicted. 
since she knew the cards were dealt against her, and especially since she was a woman during that time. So she left the murder case and went towards the wall? <laughs> Can't say I understand the thinking completely, but, you know, I do get that she wanted to start something new, though. And I guess that was just her way of doing it. I can understand that, I think. <laughs> Speaking of, though, you mentioned that Ada tried to leave town but couldn't. I think we knew something about her trying to leave from our last episode. Can you tell us more about that? I mean, there's not a ton to it, but sure. Basically, Ada wanted to go to another place to help other people. I know she did that occasionally, moving around to help others. But because it was in the midst of the investigation, it made her innocent attempt to move pretty suspicious. Ah. Gotcha. I feel really bad, too, because she just wanted to help people. She, she had nothing to do with Pearl's death whatsoever. But the investigation and everything basically skewed her entire life for a little while. Yeah, it's sad. Ada? Yes, um, hello, Detective. Hello. Such a nice day, isn't it? It is, yes. Where are you heading? Oh, just, um, out of town for a bit. A fresh start sounded like a good idea. Ah, I'm afraid they will have to wait. What, what, what do you mean? Unfortunately, because the investigation of Pearl Adam's death is currently ongoing, none of the suspects will be able to or are allowed to leave the area until everything is concluded. Is there any way I could... I'm sorry, Miss Fultz, but no. You will have to remain in town for the foreseeable future. I do apologize for any inconvenience. I understand. Have a nice day, Detective. You as well, Ada. After the investigation was dropped and after she came back to the u.s did your great grandma ever get the chance to help more people yeah she did she was one of the best dvas around until like the 1980s what happened then she just got tired she was getting into her 70s and she just wanted to spend time with her granddaughter my mom she just seemed so sweet she was that oh i didn't switch that in so, Sarah, one of us asked you earlier if you knew of anyone Ada found suspicious, but I'm curious, do you have any thoughts? Huh. Um, quite honestly, I don't know. But Bob Adams and Ada Stone have had my vote from the beginning. You think they teamed up? I mean, maybe. There's an obvious motive. I mean, like, Edith had an opportunity at their lunch. Pearl easily could have just went to the bathroom or something and bam. Frankly, Bob could have done it too. He was home alone with her from the time she arrived home. Yeah, but he said Pearl already had symptoms when she got home, before he left for the pharmacy and obviously before he came back. He said that? Doesn't mean it's true. Good point. And obviously Pearl isn't a lot to tell us what's not here and what's not, so... True. Too bad they didn't have security cameras back then. They probably did, just not super common. And I'm sure we wouldn't be able to find any of that footage, even if there were any cameras. Yeah, probably not. What do you guys think about the Bob and Edith conspiracy? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I know Ad's been thinking it was Bob for a while, but I'm not so convinced. How can you not be? Oh, so now you're back to the Bob train. All aboard! <laughs> I just don't think... I don't know. Is his behavior a little suspicious on occasion? Yeah, sure, but so is everyone else's. We thought it was Ada last week, but look at us now. I guess. Miss Adams, welcome. Hi, Ada. I'm here to have lunch with Edith Stone. Has she arrived yet? Yes, she's right over there. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ada. You're wonderful. Well, that's it for this episode. Sarah, thank you so much for coming on today. You were so helpful and a great guest. Of course, and thank you for having me. No problem. Well, next week we'll be dialing it back some more and going over the suspect's lies post case. Stay tuned because you won't want to miss that. Bye. 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 Thanks so much again for having me. Of course. We had fun getting to know you and hearing stories about your good grandma. 
Ya. Oke, okay, bye. 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 That was awesome. Yeah, thank you for getting on here. Of course. All right, dinner. Talk later. Yep. Bye.